untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at another standard 2022 deck with a red black deck titled Make Haste, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, partly built around a Westgate Regent, the 5 mana 4 4 vampire from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, with Flying and Ward, which makes the opponent discard a card if they want to target the Regent with a spell or ability, and whenever the Regent deals combat damage to a player, put that many plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. So if Regent deals 4 damage to the opponent, we get to put 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, so that can very quickly get out of hand. Now one ability the Regent doesn't have is Haste, which would definitely come in handy as we can maybe connect with the Regent right away and get those counters going, and that's why we have 8 different effects that can give the Regent Haste with our 4 copies of Azariel and 4 copies of Ogre Battle Driver, which is in one of the Arena starter decks, which is why we can still play it in the 2022 standard format, at least in best of one, not sure how much longer it's gonna stay legal, but it's a 4 mana 3 3 Ogre Warrior saying whenever another creature enters a battlefield under our control, that creature gets plus 2 plus 0 and gains haste until end of turn. So great in combination with any token makers as well. So going turn 4 Battle Driver into turn 5 Westgate Regent means we can attack for 6 in the air and put 6 plus 1 plus 1 counters on the Regent. So that's potentially a 2 turn clock. And then we also have the full playset of Zariel, Archduke of Avernus. The 4 mana Planeswalker starts out at 4 loyalty, and the plus 1 ability gives our creatures plus 1 plus 0 and haste until end of turn, so another way to give the regions additional power as well as haste. Then the 0 ability makes a 1-1 one, one Red Devil creature token that when it dies deals 1 damage to any target, also quite synergistic with a Battle Driver as we can potentially attack with a 3-1 Devil. And then the minus 6 ultimate gives us an emblem saying at the end of our first combat phase on our turn, untap target creature we control, after this phase there's an additional combat phase, which is also very synergistic with our Westgate Regent. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, we also have some treasure synergies and ways to generate extra mana to ramp into our 4 and 5 mana plays ahead of schedule. So at 1 mana we've got the full playset of Shambling Ghast, a 1-1 zombie, that when it dies we can either give a creature minus 1 minus 1 until end of turn, or we get to make a treasure token. And turn 1 Shambling Ghast is great in combination with a Deadly Dispute, which as an additional cost we have to sacrifice an artifact or creature, and then we get to draw 2 cards and make a treasure token. So if we go turn 1 Ghast, turn 2 Dispute, sacrificing Ghast, make 2 treasures total, we can potentially ramp into a turn 3 Westgate Regent, which is another way to get the counter going even sooner. And then we also have the full playset of Forsworn Paladin, a 1 mana 1-1 one, one with Menace, and for 2 mana we can tap it and pay 1 life to make a treasure token, so pretty unique way to ramp for a black deck. And then for 3 mana, target creature gets plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn, and if mana from a treasure was used, that creature also gains death touch until end of turn, so just a nice mana sink ability. And then at 2 mana, besides our 4 copies of Deadly Dispute, we also have 2 copies of Magda, which can generate treasures whenever one of our dwarves becomes tapped. And besides Magda, we also have the full playset of Skullport Merchant, which also happens to be a dwarf. 3 mana, 1 4, that when it enters a battlefield makes a treasure. And for 1 on a black, we can sacrifice another creature or treasure to draw a card. So nice mana sync ability, also synergistic with cards like Zariel, that provide a steady stream of tokens for us to sacrifice. And then we don't have any expensive artifacts or dragons to search up with Magda's last ability, although we could potentially consider adding one of those as well. And then we've got the full playset of Kalein, a reclusive painter, a 1-2, that when it enters the battlefield generates a treasure, and other creatures we control enter the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on them for each mana from a treasure spent to cast them, so that's another way to potentially boost up our Westgate Regent. And then we've got our full playset of Zariel, full playset of Battle Driver, and finally two copies of Loth, Spider Queen, the 4 mana Planeswalker, that says whenever a creature we control dies, put a loyalty counter on Spider Queen, and the 0 ability lets us draw a card at the cost of 1 life, and the minus 3 generates a pair of 2-1 black spider creature tokens with menace and reach, so having a turn 4 Battle Driver or Zariel into Spider Queen, make 2 spiders and give those, in the case of Battle Driver, plus 2 plus 0 and haste each, can also represent a lot of damage out of nowhere. And then, of course, our full playset of Westgate Regent. The mana base includes two copies of Den of the Bugbear as an additional creature land that can potentially generate a 1 1 goblin token when it attacks. Also, quite nice with a battle driver as a token will get plus two additional power. And then we've got 10 basic swamps, 8 basic mountains, and 4 of the Black Rat pathway. So that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. 
All right, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Turn one paladin, turn two we can make a treasure. Turn three merchants, take it from there. Or we could ramp into a turn three battle driver or Zariel. Gas is interesting, I think I still prefer making treasure here. Our opponent may be on a black green past the deck. Okay, so I could play one of my four drops. Which is tempting. Especially Battle Driver. If I play Zariel, I can make a devil instead. Battle Driver lines up a bit better against Dina. And then if we draw lands, we can play Hasty Devils of Zariel. If not, we can still play Merchant, for instance. Could have attacked with the Paladin since it has Menace. Probably should have. My Menace symbol's a little bugged. Okay, opponent sets up their defenses. Picked up Magda. So if I play Magda, I do still have a good attack into Dina thanks to the Battle Driver. We make a treasure. And then I can make another treasure with a paladin if I want, although it doesn't accomplish much, so probably just play Ghast. Which I might as well play with haste too. Those trade. Hunt for specimens. Can get a sideboard card. Might get past summoning or necrotic fumes to answer my battle driver. And a ranger class, that's a good one. So necrotic fumes can answer both battle driver and Zariel. So what to do this turn? Can go for hasty skullport merchants. This can attack. If they try and kill Battle Driver, I could also sacrifice it to the merchants to draw a card. Although that'll use up both my treasures. So I don't think that's going to be worth it here. And an eye twitch. Then I'd probably finish off the wolf, even though killing Innkeeper also has its advantages. Okay. So now... Probably don't want to kill the Eye Twitch right away. Although next turn it's going to get a plus one counter, so it's going to be a pretty big evasive creature. So maybe I do want him to block with it. And then go Battle Driver into Shambling Ghast. And then now I can kill the Innkeeper. Gets another Necrotic Fumes. 
We'll see if they're willing to kill my battle driver. Levels up Ranger class twice instead. Time for Zariel. And if they try and kill Sariel, I guess we won't be able to sacrifice that to the merchants. But Battle Driver we can. Sedgemore Witch to provide a steady stream of pass tokens is also quite threatening. Put on passes. Ooh, Spider Queen. That's a good draw. So we can play Spider Queen, make two spiders. I will show you what happens when the spiders Both gain haste. And then kind of like just plussing and attacking with the team here. Unleash your ferocity. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got kind of the dream start of Ghast plus a Deadly Dispute. Now we're missing our Westgate region, but hopefully we can draw into it. And then we can always just uh, get some value with Kalein and Skullport Merchant. Let's see what we're up against. Snow-covered forest. I don't have to Deadly Dispute here, but the upside if we top deck our Westgate region is pretty high, so I think I'm still gonna go for it. Make some treasure. Alright, picked up an Ogre Battle Driver instead. Yeah, that seems worth playing. And then do I want to play one of my one drops as well? I think I'll wait. Even though we could hit for three. Hope the battle driver survives and next turn we get to unload a bunch of hasty creatures. Take three from Arnie. Alrighty, so... What's the optimal way to go about this? If I play Kalein, make a treasure, four mana left can play Merchants, and then still play two one drops, which all will come into play with plus one counters on them. It seems pretty good, so... Do it like this. Alright, opponent set one. Not a bad turn. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a nice hand. Turn one Shambling Ghast, and then Merchants into Zariel, into hopefully a hasty Westgate Regent. Gotta make sure to play our Den of the Bugbear next turn. Opponent on a Monoret aggressive deck, it looks like. I'm pretty happy to trade both my ghasts for the charger, because then I can make double treasure and just ramp out the Westgate Regent, which a red deck might struggle to deal with. Yeah, I'll block. We're just gonna make two treasure.
And we'll see if they can deal 4 damage to a creature. Also attempting to play Zariel first and then next turn a hasty regent. Opponent makes a pair of goblins, that's fine. Yeah, the problem with uh, Zariel line is that there is a sequence here where they could have killed Zariel even through a double token. And now we can attack with a regent, and Zariel can uh, attack in the air in the meantime. So the only pump spell the goblin deck plays, to my knowledge, is Pair of Goblins. So I don't know if they have a way to deal 3 damage, maybe they're playing main deck Dragon's Fire. And it's probably not worth the risk to block, although this could easily be a bluff attack. I'll take it. Right. Pair of goblins to pump. And yeah, we're gonna hit for four. Have an 8-8. Eight, eight. And make some devils on defense. And with a land, we could make some hasty spider tokens as well. A relic robber. And attack. Yeah, I'll block and take out two goblins. We can actually make use of the token they give us with Robber in combination with the Skullport Merchant. Another Zariel. So probably just make another Devil. Could also pump up our Goblin Construct with Zariel's ability. But uh... This seems fine. And then play merchants. Attack for 8. And I can use the merchant's ability if I want to. Which I could use now since this doesn't block and I might draw into a land. Although I guess keeping the ability to sack the devil to deal 1 damage at instant speed could also be relevant. Can maybe like block, sacrifice, take out another one toughness creature. So all I have to do is survive and then region can get the job done. Opponent attacks. So the card I'm concerned about is another pair of goblins, especially if the charger ends up dying because then they can deal three to my face. So I can avoid that situation by blocking with the Devil and sacrificing it, and then not killing the Charger and instead killing the 1-1. One -one. So let's do that. Sure, this looks good. Pair of Goblins. And then sacrifice the devil to kill the goblin and this way we don't take any damage whatsoever all right ggs regent for the win on to the next one All right, we're on the play with a promising hand. If we can hit our land drops, we can curve one of our haste enablers into Westgate Regent. And between Kalein and Deadly Dispute, we should be able to generate enough treasure to get that going. Magda's also tempting. Yeah, we'll go with Magda first. 
and hope she can connect. Falky gonna have a look. Can steal my Westgate Regent. Eventually we can maybe sacrifice a Devil Token to finish off Valky. Regent gone. Alright, land is good. So Magda gets to attack. Happy to trade. Opponent accepts. Get a region back. And then... What do I want to play next? Could go for Zariel or Battle Driver, although then we won't be guaranteed a hasty regent on the following turn. So Zariel is the most removal proof of these options to get some value in the meantime. And then next turn we can maybe deadly disputes to draw into an extra land and make a treasure to set up our regent with haste on the following turn. Predation, gonna have another look. Probably takes a regent for good now. Nope, takes a battle driver. Okay. So, Kalein. Make a devil. And now I could steadily dispute right now. Since I haven't played land for the turn yet. Seems reasonable. Sang the devil. Alright, did not find a land, so hopefully we find one next turn. Field trip for ramp. Yeah, we could be attacking with a six-powered Westgate Regent, thanks to Colleen and Zariel. Sadly, we'll have to wait an extra turn. So now... Probably want to save my treasure, and we'll just play Ghasts. And I could see plussing instead of uh, making an extra Devil now. Binding destroy Zariel. Another Kalinda draw. So things aren't really coming together here, but can play another Zariel now. Hit for six. And the opponent's still under quite a bit of pressure. Even though we're not threatening Westgate Regent anymore. Shambling cast can make a treasure. Opponent choosing the right creature type at least. So if we draw land, we can still get there. And there we go. Westgate Regent with haste will be 5 damage. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and this hand definitely has potential with double Westgate Regent. Bit top-heavy with three five drops, but we can kind of ramp into it with the Paladin. So I'll happily just activate it next turn. Facing Tejuru Blindblade. And we'll stay back and make a treasure. Do I trade if they attack is a question? Don't know. Could use an extra treasure from the Paladin first. Because next turn I can activate and play Ghast. Opponent doesn't attack. And yeah, we'll make the play we described. Play Ghast. And make another treasure. Could benefit me to play Spider Queen first if we expect the opponent to remove the Regent right away. Realm Walker on Elf, so Black Green Elf, Tribal. 
So if that's the case, they might be less likely to have a removal spell for the Westgate Regent. If it was a Death Touch tribal deck, I would be concerned with like a bite effect on the Death Touch creature to take out the Regent. So, yeah, it's probably worth it to run out the Vampire here. And I'll save my treasure to play another 5-drop next turn. So if they can't answer the region, we're in business. Harald unites the elves. It's not a removal spell, at least not on the first chapter. Does get back an elvish warmaster. Okay, I think we attack and then probably just play another region. Already an 8-8. On the third chapter they can potentially shrink some of my creatures down, but the region's gonna be way too big to take out at that point. They might have another Harald Unites the Elves in hand since they were looking at their graveyard. Yep. So it gets back Scamfar Avenger, most likely. Triggers Warmaster. If the Warmaster attacks, I could have double blocked and killed it with the minus one, minus one. Picked up a land which lets me play Spider Queen. So the Regents attack. I think I might be actually better off going Ghast plus Merchants. Just to have more stuff in play. Or I could go Merchants and then keep up the ability to maybe sacrifice Ghast and kill Avenger. Either way, these two are attacking. Because the opponent's going to get plus one counters next turn, so if I want to kill Avenger, I kind of have to do it now. I guess I can still play an extra Ghasts, and then, uh, yeah, we'll sacrifice this. Give Avenger minus one, minus one. And play another Ghasts. Alright, and at 18 life, even with these all getting plus one, plus one, I don't think we're at risk of dying. Would have been reasonable to leave one Westgate region back since we're pretty likely to kill them next turn. Although if they find a one mana one two with reach, then they could potentially chum block their way out of it. So that dies. Could give something minus one minus one. Since the treasure doesn't matter at this point. So we lose all our blockers except for merchants, which can chum block. And we should have ample damage on the way back. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. This hand has potential. So we'll try it. Shambling Ghast into Colleen. Ramp into maybe a turn 3 Zariel. Opponent with their own Shambling Ghasts. Ooh, could go for Deadly Dispute first instead. Could be worth it. Don't have a Westgate Regent in hand yet. But it just opens up so many more options than just playing Kalein here. And for Specimens. So Mono Black Sacrifice deck perhaps. Gets uh, best summoning. So the ground's gonna get pretty stalled, so finding that big flying creature is gonna be nice. Alright, I 
guess we'll play Zariel after all. And the Devil Tokens also line up quite nicely. And then, yeah, we could still top deck a Westgate Regent and attack with it with haste next turn. Treasure of All definitely points towards it being a mono black deck as opposed to blank green. And uh, yeah, take out both. Check for traps, checks out my hand, can take a Deadly Dispute, which is probably our best card. And at least we still have an active Planeswalker, can also consider activating Den of the Bugbear. But I think this turn I prefer playing Kalein and making an extra Devil. And then next turn I'll probably activate Den of the Bugbear if we don't draw anything else. Playing a Paladin as a 2-2 also reasonable, since I'll still have the mana to cast a Regent if we draw it. So if I go for Den of the Bugbear, they can trade using the two Pest Tokens. Yeah, I think that's still okay. Tank with all. Then do we sandbag our paladin in case of a sweeper? Don't know if our opponent's likely to play any sweepers in this type of deck. It's not impossible. There's also the Hive of the Eye Tyrant we need to worry about, so that's another reason to play out a second blocker. Alright. Sadly, they do have a sweeper. Make another devil. Can also start using the paladin's mana ability here to pump up a creature. Another shadow's verdict, that's annoying. So can't really do anything. Alright, battle driver, there we go. And then now if I plus Zariel, it doesn't die to the opponent's creature land. Rain, on them. And then I gotta hope to top deck a Westgate Regent, which would be perfect here. luck there. Well, I guess we'll just make a double then. And hit for six. Keep land in hand since our opponent's playing check for traps. So they might the cast that and just end up taking one damage. And then even if Zariel dies, we still have a Battle Driver in play, which can give a Regent haste. So the fact they were so eager to trade for my creature land, I guess, also explained by the fact that they had two sweepers. Otherwise, we might have taken a more conservative approach to save our creature land. 
dispute to draw two. And there's a check for traps. And there's a Westgate Regent at long last. And that's a lethal attack. All right, sweet. So yeah, we got to see our Make Haste deck in action. And while the main game plan of attacking with a hasty regent doesn't always work out, the deck is of course still capable of winning without that, and sometimes just ramping into regents without haste is still pretty strong. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.